Good evening, and welcome to the 67th annual meeting of SciFair Federal Credit Union. My name is Jacob Wills. I'm the Vice President of Business Development for the Credit Union, and I will be the MC of tonight's meeting, which is being hosted both in person at the Richard E. Berry Educational Support Center in Cyprus, and also streamed online via Zoom. We have members logged in online and who are watching from locations across our community. To all of our members who have taken the time to attend this meeting, I want to welcome you and thank you for participating. In order to open our annual meeting, we need to confirm that a quorum of members are present. Ms. Erwan Wilson, here on my left, has served as board secretary this past year. Ms. Wilson, can you confirm that we have a quorum of members present this evening? Thank you. With a quorum present, I'd like to officially call to order this annual meeting of SciFair Federal Credit Union. I'd like to also welcome the members of Prairie View Federal Credit Union, a division of SciFair FCU. PVFCU officially joined forces with SciFair Credit Union in February of 2022. We are very happy you are here. A report on some of the exciting things occurring at PVFCU will be coming up a little later in tonight's reports. At this time, I'd like to introduce the members of SciFair Federal Credit Union's Board of Directors and Supervisory Committee who are here this evening. When I call your name, please raise your hand. Dr. Debbie Emery, Board Chair. Mr. Harold Rowe, Board Vice Chair. Ms. Erwan Wilson, Board Secretary, Ms. Dina Morgan, Board Treasurer, who could not be with us this evening, Ms. Gail Parker, Mr. Chuck Brandman, Ms. Reagan Pugh, Mr. Noel Yepes, and Dr. Cheryl Henry. I would also like to introduce our Supervisory Committee members. Mr. Gary Kenninger is our committee chair, but he could not be here with us tonight. Ms. Elaine Schaefer, would you please stand or raise your hand to be recognized? Mr. Keith Felder. Ms. Lori Baker and Ms. Tamika Ramsey also serve on the committee, but could not be here with us this evening. Next, I would like to introduce the Credit Union's executive leadership team. When I call your name, please stand. Valerie Prillman, Vice President of Human Resource and Compliance. Sean Orthober, Vice President of Marketing. Georgette Salazar, Vice President of Member Experience. Federico Castillo, Vice President of Finance and Accounting. Shane Perkins, Vice President of IT and Innovation. Catherine Lachulis, our Vice President of Lending and Loss Prevention, could not be here this evening. Cameron Dickey, President and CEO. And again, I'm Jacob Wills, Vice President of Business Development. If you are a member of SciFair Federal Credit Union, either through SciFair Federal Credit Union branded locations or our Prairie View FCU division, I want to thank you for taking out time of your busy lives to participate in this year's annual meeting. As member owners of the credit union, it's an honor to reflect on the credit union's performance from this past year with you, as well as share a look ahead at some of the items we are working on. At this time, I'd like to invite Cameron Dickey, President CEO, to the podium to facilitate the approval of minutes from last year's annual meeting. Thank you, Jacob. Good evening. Our first order of business is the approval of last year's annual meeting minutes. If you are an in-person attendee, you should have received a copy of last year's minutes as you arrived and checked in. Uh, additionally, a digital copy has been posted to our website at cypherfcu.org forward slash meeting, the same location where online attendees signed in to tonight's meeting. In order to document the approval of last year's minutes, I'm going to request a motion to approve them. Our in-person attendees can move for approval by raising their hand and stating, I make a motion to approve the minutes, or online by typing motion to approve or second in the chat window. 
and a CIFIRE Federal Credit Union team member will document the names of the members making the motion and seconding for the minutes of this year's proceeding when we review them next year. If there are no additions or corrections to the minutes, I need a motion to approve the minutes as presented. We got a motion. I see a second. All of those in favor, please signify by saying aye. All opposed, same sign. The motion carries and last year's minutes are approved. Now please help me welcome Dr. Debbie Emery, Chair of our Board of Directors, who will deliver the Board of Directors report. Good evening. I'm so glad to see you all here tonight. The past year marked SciFair Federal Credit Union's 67th year since the credit union's founding by employees of the then Cypress Fairbanks Consolidated School District. In those first few years, the credit union's signature cards and ledger were kept in a shoebox inside an office desk drawer at SciFair High School. Imagine that. In the nearly 70 intervening years, SciFair Federal Credit Union has evolved and grown tremendously. What started with 10 founding members has grown to nearly 25,000 memberships and assets of 335 million. Serving on the board of directors of a credit union is unique from other financial institutions in a number of ways, but most notably because as a not-for-profit cooperative, each member of our board is a volunteer. As members of the credit union, we are elected by the membership to represent your interests in the credit union's policymaking, available services, long-term strategic planning, and ensuring the credit union operates within safety and soundness standards through proper oversight. Additionally, the board appoints a supervisory committee that acts as an audit committee and watchdog to ensure compliance with applicable laws and regulations, accounting requirements, and that proper checks and balances are in place. Coming up later in the supervisory committee's report, you will hear more about the credit union's oversight, including audit and regulatory compliance results from the past year. In February last year, the board and the executive leadership team conducted a day-long strategic planning session facilitated by two well-respected industry leaders. The session focused on the establishment of long-term long objectives for one, three, and five years into the future. This was followed by a second day of facilitated planning with just the senior leadership team to develop the underlying tactics for each new strategy. I am proud to report that the strategic planning session was extremely productive and resulted in three primary goals, primary goal areas for the credit union. So first strategy one was to increase the leverage technology for greater ease of use, data utilization and security. The intended outcomes of this goal include increased efficiency, additional security, efficient access, and greater data analysis. Strategy two was to reach new markets and increase our brand position for accelerated growth. The intended outcomes of this goal are framed over a five-year period and include growth of the credit union to 500 million in assets, 5,000 net new members added to the credit union, an average increase of five basis points annually in SciFair Federal Credit Union's return on average ROA ratio, an average increase of 5% growth in our core product usage, and 5% special net income dividend to members annually when these goals are achieved. These five intended outcomes of strategy two have been combined into a five-year growth plan called Five Years, Five Keys. Much like our 10-year SciFair 2022 plan that guided the credit union's growth and decision-making from 2012 to 2022, our Five Years, Five Keys plan is designed to guide the credit union's growth and service to members through the year 2028. And lastly, strategy number three is to sustain and strengthen a strong, inclusive culture that reflects SciFair Federal Credit Union's values. Our intended outcomes include strong adherence to the credit union philosophy 
of people helping people. Fulfillment of Cypher Federal Credit Union's vision statement to write good into the life stories around us and to ensure that our staff, leadership, board, and committees continue to reflect and benefit from the uniqueness, fullness, and diversity of the communities we serve. The strategic direction that the board has set for the credit union reflects the historic values of CFFCU while boldly embracing necessary evolution and growth to ensure another 67 years of service to our members. So a few key accomplishments from this past year, annually in late January to early February, the credit union's executive leadership team takes an inventory of work completed over the prior years and compiles a list of key accomplishments. It's always astounding how many projects, completed goals, new milestones, and special recognitions appear in this annual recap. While all of these accomplishments are the results of many people's work and would not be possible without the remarkable CFFCU staff and leaders, here are six from 2023 that the board played an important, an important role in. Interest rate risk and liquidity risk management. This past year saw some financial institutions locally and nationally struggling with negative earnings and a decline in operational liquidity as a result of rapidly rising rates, faster than we've ever seen before in this U.S. economy. Additionally, the rate environment we've reached through these increases hasn't been seen in over 20 years. The resulting higher dividend rates on deposits even for some institutions to dip into capital reserves over the past year to cover rapidly rising operating expenses and, in some instances, required regulator intervention in their operations. I'm proud to report that interest rate risk and liquidity risk were significant areas of discussion and focus by the Board of Directors and Executive Leadership Team in 2023 and even extending back into late 2022. I'm pleased to report that Despite a 355% increase in dividend expense to maintain competitive rates for CFFCU members, the credit union's 2023 net income was very strong, ending at $2.7 million for the year. As a percentage of assets, this represents an increase of 15 basis points over the prior year. And as a dollar amount, it was higher than any of the 66 previous years. We had a strong net income, which equals capital cushion for safety and soundness. CFFCU's strong financials, conservative management, and ability to absorb financial downturns or unexpected disruptions to the earnings are some of the main reason our members trust SciFair Federal Credit Union with their finances. CFFCU has always sought to maintain strong financial performance metrics, but following the 2009 Great Recession, the credit union's board and executive team took note of the significant financial impact that can occur from external economic forces. As a result, our board has made growth of our capital reserves a high priority over the past 11 years. Throughout 2023, the credit union continued to adjust deposit and loan rates to maintain a positive net interest margin while providing exceptional value to CFFCU's members. On the dividend side, higher deposit rates resulted in $1.1 million in additional dividends paid to SciFair Federal Credit Union depositors in 2023 versus the prior year. This, I believe, underscores the significant achievement of the credit union to balance higher dividend expenses while growing the credit union's capital reserves. The increase in the CFFCU's net worth was 77 basis points, from 8.61% at the end of 2022 to 9.38% at the end of 2023. This will continue to provide an additional safety and soundness cushion for the credit union's members in future periods of market turbulence and economic uncertainty. Cypher Federal Credit Union's member service scores remained at the top percentile for the financial services industry. With an organizational vision focused on writing good into the life stories around us, it's important to periodically measure how well we are at achieving this. One such measurement that we use is called a net promoter score. 
Net promoter scores are a common metric used in customer experiences programs. NPS scores measure customer loyalty by looking at whether a business is creating loyalty and positive word of mouth through the service experiences they're providing. Used by millions of businesses to measure and track how they're perceived by their customers, a high net promoter score indicates a high level of satisfaction and a positive customer journey. With possible survey scores ranging from 1 to 10, with 10 being the most likely to recommend, scores between 9 and 10 are considered the gold standards. SciFair Federal Credit Union has been utilizing net promoter metrics since late 2015, and the feedback from members has proven invaluable to refine and calibrate our service to be the best in class. While the financial services industry average for net promoter score is just 34 out of 100, scores over 70 are universally regarded among the very best. And I'm proud to report that SciFair Federal Credit Union's net promoter score through 2023 averaged 77.41%, an increase of 3.59 from the prior year. I agree. Thank you. Simply put, this translates to nearly 8 out of 10 members scoring their interactions with SciFair Federal Credit Union as the very best. When we first started measuring net promoter scores in late 2015, our average NPS percentage was 53%, still well above the industry average, but well below the best-in-class experiences we sought for our members. CFFCU's high NPS scores today are a reflection of many years of investing, investment in creating a member-centric, hospitality-caliber service culture that is focused on helping our members feel welcome, taken care of, and listened to, and competitive products and services designed to help them along their financial journey. The remodel of our Prairie View Financial Center kicked off in December. One of our key initiatives of 2023 was the planned remodel of our Prairie View FCU divisional branch. The service location at the entrance of PVAMU campus on University Drive was originally built in 1982 and had received minimal updates. With the merger of Prairie View FCU and SciFair FCU that occurred in the spring of 2022, a data migration of accounts was our top priority in the months following the merger. This was followed by updates to the P PVFCU branding, signage, website landing page, member statements, updated membership account agreements, and expanded services at that location. In the middle of 2023, we completed a replacement of the old through-wall ATM on the outside of the building with a new state-of-the-art drive-through ITM interactive telemachine. While providing a substantially updated ATM experience, the ITM has added access to a live drive-through teller through video who can answer member questions, provide account information, provide account assistance, and perform transactions. This upgrade also had the added benefit of expanding the business hours at this location to now include Saturday drive-through hours, which has received an enthusiastic response from our members. I'm excited to report that branch remodel has now been completed and the red carpet, or purple carpet rather, because of Prairie View, was rolled out with a week-long grand opening celebration the week of March 18th. The update interior is sleek, contemporary, and branded to showcase Prairie View's FCU's 87-year history in the community. Off the left side of the lobby are two spacious consultation offices behind glass front windows. On the right side is a new hospitality counter with refrigerated beverages below a counter for periodic refreshments for our members. In the middle of the lobby near the beautiful new seating area with stylish touches of purple and gold sits the new technology bar with bar stool seating. Lastly, a new lobby ITM has been installed under the timeline mural that tells the history and milestones of PVFCU over the 87 years. The remodeled space was designed for 21st century transaction efficiency, which even displays a picture of depositive items on each transaction receipt. The exciting response from our PVC FCU members and the Prairie View community has been wonderful and enthusiastic. 
and we have seen this translate into more new account openings every week since the remodel was complete. So if you're driving down 290, headed out towards College Station, pull over at Prairie View and take a look. It is beautiful. Speaking of new accounts, 2023 was a very strong year for the credit union's membership growth. When you combine sound business strategies, a commitment to providing increased value to CFFCU members through competitive rates, representative board governance by elected members of the credit union, a high quality service culture, eye-catching and award-winning products and employees, and modern financial centers designed for collaboration. The result was a strong year for SciFair FCU membership growth. With a net growth of 426 new members in 2023, the credit union exceeded the previous 12-year average net growth, net growth rate by 51.38%. Combined with 505 net new members in 2022 and early results for 2024, CFFCU has grown by nearly 1,000 net new members in the past 27 months. As I near the completion of my first term as board chair and my seventh year on the credit union's board of directors, I want to end my remarks by noting the sense of satisfaction and pride that I feel and which I've heard expressed by other board members to be a part of the FCU, to be a part of what SciFair Federal Credit Union does. Everyone at CFFCU, from the volunteer board to the management team and on through to every employee, everyone consistently aspires to make a positive difference in the lives around them and to achieve the highest possible standards of quality, value, service, and impact. And this aspiration to quality is consistently producing award-winning results. Two years ago, our prior board chair, Ms. Gail Parker, had the opportunity to share with you that CFFCU's president and CEO, Cameron, had recently been awarded the highest global recognition in the credit union industry, the Distinguished Service Award from the World Council of Credit Unions. Well, tonight, I am proud to report Mr. Dickey was again recognized this year with another prestigious recognition for his work at SciFair FCU, the Credit Union Professional of the Year Award from the Cornerstone Credit Union League. Help me thank him for that. The award is bestowed annually to just one credit union professional across the five-state Cornerstone region, which includes Arkansas, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Texas, and serves over 700 credit unions, and only one is selected. Mr. Dickey's leadership contributes to the credit union industry, exemplifying the cooperative principles of credit unions locally, nationally, and globally, and volunteer services on the boards of many community organizations were cited in this award. Notably, the credit union received several other awards the past year. Mr. Dickey will highlight those special awards in his report coming up in just a moment. A common thread in all of the awards received by CFFCU is the activities consistently undertaken to improve the lives of our members and community to support local nonprofits students and education employees, and vast commitment by CFFCU employees who volunteer many hours each year in our communities. These accolades are additional confirmations that we are indeed writing good into the life story of those around us. In closing, it is a pleasure to represent the credit union's membership on the board of directors. I am proud to be a part of a long line of engaged, deliberative, and experienced members who have contributed to the success of SciFair FCU, and I believe the future remains bright for our credit union. Thank you. I would now like to ask Mr. Cameron Dickey, President and CEO of SciFair Federal Credit Union, to deliver the President's report. Thank you, Debbie. Tonight is the 12th annual meeting of SciFair FCU that I have attended since becoming CEO. And each year I am grateful for the opportunity to talk about the exciting things happening at the credit union, the year just completed, and the items we're working on in the year ahead. For our 2023 financial results, SciFair FCU had a very strong year in both terms of financially and our growth ratios. It has been a challenging operating environment, as uh, Dr. Emery expressed, with a rapid increase in deposit rates 
led by the Federal Reserve in an attempt to lower inflation. Our 2023 depositors at Cypher FCU generally followed the national trend with declining savings balances. This has been largely attributed to higher costs for goods and services and pressures on household budgets. The challenges posed by declining deposit balances and rapidly increasing interest rates were compounded by brisk competition for deposits at the majority of financial institutions. It seemed like everyone wanted deposits and were struggling to maintain a sufficient cash flow to keep up with the borrowing and transactional needs. Cypher FCU was not immune to these conditions. However, the board and senior leadership team were diligent in managing the challenges with targeted special promotions, detailed analysis of deposit trends, lowering previous target goals for lending, and always vigilant expense control. The result was a strong bottom line over the course of the year, with year-to-date income ending at $2.77 million as of December 31st. This was an increase over the prior year, which ended at 2.29. As mentioned by Dr. Emery in her report, the credit union's bottom line includes a substantial dividend increase nearly $1.1 million more in 2023 than 2022. The credit union's earnings equate to a return on average assets of 0.83%, which is an increase of 12 basis points. This compares favorably to the industry peer value for our asset size and our region of 0.70. The credit union's growth ratios were similarly strong with a 10.48% increase in total loans Cypher FCU funded approximately $62 million in loans to members in 2023. The year was a strong one for membership growth as well, with 426 net new members and an increase of 1.74% over the year. The credit union ended the year with a capital of $31,188,678 or 9.6% using the NCUA's net worth to average assets methodology. I have marveled at the growth and strong results produced each year since joining joining the organization in 2012. Here is how the credit union has grown. Assets that were 1.79 million in 2012 reached 335 million as of 1231, an increase of 87%. Total loans has increased from 96.5 million to 237 million as of year end, an increase of 146%. And on the screen, you can see the progress of loans over the course of 2023. The credit union's capital reserves have grown from 13.6 million to 31.2 million, an increase of 128%. Those are additional protective. Uh, measures for the credit union when economic turmoil occurs. On the slide, you'll see that delinquency and charge-offs moved forward and higher over the course of the last year. And this is a trend that we've seen carry into 2024. Uh, As I talk a little bit later in my report about items that we see coming up in 2024 and the years ahead, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the projected Uh, effect of loan delinquency and loan losses. Our new Lone Star College Falcon card was one of the exciting initiatives that we launched in 2023. This was a multi-year conversation with a long-term partner at Lone Star College. And in fact, my predecessor, Ms. Debbie Blackshear, was involved in the bond initiative to help pass the North Harris County College bond that brought Lone Star College to our area. And so uh, over the years, the credit union has endowed several scholarships. And this was a natural, organic uh, step in that relationship to expand our wildly successful high school program uh, to our first college, Lone Star College. And we worked with the college over the course of about a year and a half to come up with uh, the design, the agreement, And I'm proud to say that uh, the result is a five-year exclusive arrangement whereby 12 cents of every transaction for Falcon card holders goes to the Lone Star College Foundation and helps to support scholarships for Lone Star College Sci-Fair students. 
uh, a statistic that I heard uh, a few years ago uh, and have validated a few times with uh, the president of Lone Star College is that 25% of CFISD graduating seniors will attend Lone Star College within one year. And within two years, 50% of CFISD students will take at least one class at Lone Star College. It's a remarkable, high quality college experience for our community. And we are very proud to be a partner with Lone Star College on this program. Because we launched this in Lone Star College's 20th anniversary year, we uh, set a goal, an ambitious goal, to endow 20 student scholarships through this program. That's just our initial goal. Um, depending upon the uh, way that this program captures the attention of students and alumni and faculty and community supporters, uh, we believe that this is a first step towards endowing several more scholarships with Lone Star College. Next, I'd like to highlight some excellent work done by and through the various roles in the organization. Um, specifically, starting off, I'd like to highlight the quality of our marketing and communications team. Uh, there are many hands that make that possible remarkable team uh, that has been in place and done this consistently. Uh, this past year in 2023, the Credit Union won six Pinnacle Marketing Awards. Those awards are um, given out by the Cornerstone Credit Union League. Again, another uh, reference to the five state region and the number of other credit unions that are included in that group. Uh, this past year, Cypher Federal Credit Union was awarded best print advertising, best card design, best social media, best special event, best annual report, which ought to make all of us really happy because that's particularly uh, important tonight, and then best television advertising. This follows last year where our marketing department uh, collected a unprecedented nine Pinnacle Marketing Awards and since 2017, they have collected 31 Pinnacle Marketing Awards. Congratulations. Next, I'd like to highlight a few other recognitions that occurred in 2023. Uh, the Federation of Houston Professional Women uh, honored Cypher Federal Credit Union with their Excellence in Diversity Award. That award is um, awarded to organizations that demonstrate an inclusive environment that gives multiple points of view and people of different backgrounds an opportunity in leadership, board positions, uh, and through the service that they provide uh, to their uh, constituents, their organization, and their customers. And so that was uh, a really remarkable uh, recognition of the work that is oftentimes uh, ch championed uh, tirelessly and silently behind the scenes by our uh, Vice President of HR, Valerie Perlman. So thank you, Valerie, for the work that you do in that area. And we will continue to live the um, aspirational qualities and the uh, reality of trying to represent the community that we serve. Next up is our Community Hero Award. This was a recognition provided by the CFISD VIPS. Uh, that award um, was designed to recognize organizations that uh, kind of do all the things for the school district, that uh, provide financial support, have adoptive relationships, uh, provide volunteers, uh, bus buddies, classroom um, readers, uh, support on uh, big events. Uh, We've oftentimes been involved in events that were both benefiting the Cypher Education Foundation as well as being hosted and led by the district. Uh, the district fund run was an example of that. Um, this recognition was very special to us. 1956, it was 10 educators of the CFISD uh, school district that started the credit union as uh, Dr. Emery alluded to earlier. And so to have 
67 years in the rearview mirror and to continue to be demonstrating that commitment and that heartbeat of educators in the organization was very special to have recognized. Lastly would be uh, Living Magazine's Reader's Choice for Best Credit Union Sci Fair. Uh, we are delighted to have won this recognition now four years in a row. It is something that is um, voted on by the readers and so it has uh, the ability to go where other readers might pick it up and have other loyalties and other credit union relationships. Uh, we take seriously the the charge that we are that hometown, small, main street organization uh, that's been out here since there was cows in the fields and before many of the other financial institutions have moved in. And uh, we don't take that for granted. We want to live up to that uh, heritage. I think it's partly why we so closely identify with the relationship that Prairie View Federal Credit Union has in the Prairie View community. Uh, we want to be good stewards of that relationship uh, the way that we have uh, tried to live up to the legacy of so many people who have uh, contributed to Cypher FCU's history. I'd like to talk a little bit more about Prairie View Federal Credit Union. Uh, this past year, um, we heard that we started the remodel project, and I'm excited to be able to share with you, if you have not yet been out there, uh, what the ending result looks like. Uh, on the screen, you'll see pictures from the ribbon cutting uh, event that we held. This shows a little bit of the outside. The um, ATM is not uh, attached to the front of the building the way that that picture uh, that I put there uh, seems to indicate, seemed to look, look balanced by putting it there, but now it looks weird to me. Um, but that gives you an idea of the outside. Uh, you see the graphic with the uh, Prairie View logo on the window, the flowers, the new ATM. Uh, everything has been refreshed and touched up and new signage, all uh, designed around the long-standing close relationship of Prairie View Federal Credit Union with Prairie View University and the community of Prairie View. Um, it was a very special event and had an opportunity to interact with many business leaders and business owners and people who work for the university, a lot, a lot of longtime stakeholders in the uh, credit union who stopped by. Um, we also held a, a event, an invitation only, to invite people from the community that had served on the board of directors, who had been involved with the supervisor committee, served on the credit committee, uh, worked as employees, um, people who were in uh, positions of influence that have guided the credit union in the past and also going forward uh, are in key relationships in the community. And that event was um, very special. The next, uh, these are pictures of the inside of the branch that has been recently remodeled. You can see that there are uh, consistencies with, if you've been in one of our service locations that are Cypher branded, uh, you recognize the general uh, layout, uh, collaboration rooms, the use of interactive tellers to provide transaction services in a crisp, modern, efficient way. But uh, sprinkled in, you'll see not a hint of uh, our green color and our key logo. Uh, everything is branded through uh, the Prairie View uh, purple. A little bit of gold, we, didn't, we felt a little bit of gold goes a long way. Uh, so. You'll see uh, there are some accent pillows on the chairs in the lobby that have a little hint of the gold there. Um, one of the features that we're still planning to add is uh, if you have noted in our Cypher branded locations, the reclaimed wood wall provides a really beautiful textured uh, differentiation. Uh, also is something that's socially responsible. The, use that as a, a, a wall covering rather than have them be discarded. Uh, we've done the same thing at our Prairie View location. The difference is in Cypher FCU, there are many phrases that over the years have become synonymous with the credit union. They're tied to key value uh, statements, things that are part of the vernacular and vocabulary of the credit union. And we're still learning what those phrases are for Prairie View. And so, we have uh, challenged our uh, 
branch manager, Roderick, who's back in the corner right there, and his team, and through our engagement with other leaders who have had a long-standing relationship with Prairie View SEU, we're trying to gather what are the phrases, what are the terms, what are the, what's the vocabulary uh, that has developed over 87 years, and we will use that to do the same uh, framing of words across the top, up top of that uh, reclaimed wood wall. In the center of that uh, slide, you see four darker panels and probably can't make out very much uh, what is on them. That is our legacy hall, and that is specifically uh, the Prairie View FCU legacy. Um, as we began to look at this merger uh, back in the spring of uh, 2022 when it was uh, commenced, initially the conversation was about bringing them under the umbrella of the Cypher FCU brand, but we quickly became aware of this rich history, this connectivity with the university, the amount of years that people had volunteered and shaped and guided and, and nurtured that organization. And we felt that as an organization that has made a vision statement to write good into the life stories of those around us, we could not go in and write our story over the top of their story. And so uh, we began to uh, immerse ourselves in conversations with people that knew about the organization documents, historical documents, much like we did when we did uh, our uh, 60th anniversary for Cypher FCU, holding, holding old annual meeting minutes and board minutes and the founding documents and documenting the names of the individuals who had contributed and shaped the organization over such a long period of time. And so our legacy hall at Prairie View FCU is uh, designed to accomplish that same thing. There are 16 names at the beginning that uh, indicate the founders of Prairie View FCU. Two of them I have learned just through the VIP event alone were uh, former college presidents at the university. That's a remarkable connectivity for us to have and to know about that we would have lost had we put uh, just our own logo on top of it. And so as we celebrated that evening and we had a champagne toast and we talked about the history of the organization, two things stood out to me. Many of the individuals whose name appeared on that legacy hall found themselves gathering and pointing to their name and talking about their memories of being involved in the organization and taking pictures together next to the legacy hall. I make myself cry. Uh, it was emotionally significant to them to know that their contributions were captured and that they, they had not been erased and that they would live on in some fashion. And that, that's very on brand for Cypher FCU and now Prairie View FCU. Um, the second aha during the sort of look back at the history was the context of the timing of Prairie View Federal Credit Union being chartered. It opened with 16 names and everybody filling out the appropriate paperwork and making the initial uh, mandatory deposit in 1937. That's two years before the end of the Great Depression, 27 years before federal civil rights protection laws, and it is a remarkable story no matter what credit union you go into, many of them were chartered during the Great Depression. Even more remarkable to me was the absence of basic rights that many people had in the Prairie View community that could not find alternatives elsewhere, not simply because banks had tightened their lending, but simply because they didn't have the right skin color. And so we're very proud of Prairie View SEU and very, very proud of the way, way this remodel came out uh, we've had a week long of celebration during uh, the middle of March. We're continuing to find ways to expand and grow into the Prairie View community, support growth. Uh, we've seen some activity next to the branch that seems to be there bringing in dirt. We're hoping that that might mean we're going to get a, a neighbor nearby. Uh, there's talk that there may be a medical office building being built next to us, and we would love that, and we are hoping that our investment in our 
uh, remodel location will encourage others to recognize that it's a main artery to a beautiful and large and vibrant and uh, fantastic university. And we think there'll be a lot of business along that main entrance uh, at some point. Our goal is to be that main street financial institution that's been there before everybody else and to continue to meet the needs of the community of Prairie View. A few more things I'll mention. Uh, last year we started uh, our first ever Prairie View FCU uh, scholarship. Uh, it was a $1,500 scholarship for students attending Prairie View University. Uh, our first winner of that scholarship was a student from Sy Springs High School, graduating senior, who was going off to Prairie View, uh, Javen Jackson. Uh, we've had requests over uh, the few months after that that we expand the eligibility for that scholarship so that current students of Prairie View University can be eligible for that scholarship, and we are making that change to make sure that that's possible. Uh, next up is the 2024 scholarship recipient. We are in the process of reading those uh, applications right now. We should have uh, a decision in the next few weeks, so uh, we're indicating that we'll have an announcement for that around May. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, we've developed some financial workshops, and the workshops are developed uh, for both uh, our Prairie View FCU brand as well as our Scyther FCU uh, family. Uh, those include car buying, credit building, budgeting, and financial tips, and first-time home buying. And we see such a demand from uh, our community partners, from our schools, uh, from the university, uh, and from uh, the members who come in and use the credit union on a day-to-day -day basis for additional financial education tools, either for themselves uh, or for their family members, uh, oftentimes for community groups that they are involved in supporting and, and seeking additional resources. And so uh, there's probably far greater demand than we can even meet, but we want to make sure that we're uh, providing as much as we can. Last but not least, uh, we launched a purple card Purple card is intended to be the equivalent of what we did with Lone Star College. We do not yet have a licensing agreement with, with Prairie View University. I'll tell you about something that is in process there in just a moment. But until then, we really wanted to make sure that we had the same commitment uh, to scholarships and students uh, at Prairie View. And so we have launched the purple card. Uh, it is uh, decidedly the same royal purple co color that students and faculty and alumni will recognize uh, from uh, being uh, on campus, but uh, it does not yet uh, carry the Panther logo, and so I'll tell you about that in just a moment. Presently, 12 cents of every transaction uh, on qualifying transactions of $5 or more are eligible uh, for those donations to go to the Prairie View Foundation for student scholarships, and we're uh, working on a licensing agreement that would change the program, add to it. Uh, if for somebody wants uh, something specifically branded, we're gonna offer a Panther card. And we are, uh, we've submitted all the application, we're waiting for the decision to come back. We are um, cautiously optimistic that that agreement will be reached. We are also tying it with a sponsorship arrangement with the athletics area that is comprehensive, that includes uh, additional visibility for uh, the Prairie View Credit Union, uh, opportunities for us to work on some uh, internships, both paid and uh, unpaid, uh, as well as providing life skill and financial education. It is a comprehensive package that we are providing uh, to administration and to the students uh, as part of our commitment to the community through the Prairie View FCU. Writing good into life stories is uh, what drives all of our decision making. Uh, drives our decision making around lending, around investments, uh, with the community projects that we pick up. Our scholarship program is an embodiment of that commitment to write good into life stories. And so this past year, uh, we uh, awarded a $3,500 scholarship in honor of Patty R. Miller. Uh, it has been over time, we have moved that to be essentially a full year Lone Star College scholarship. 
uh, covers uh, tuition, books, and, and additional expenses. Uh, last year's winner was uh, Alondra from Sy Lakes High School. Catherine uh, Benavides uh, won the $1,500 scholarship of our membership scholarship last year. She was a student at Langley Creek High School. And then we made three community scholarships to students Andrew Mason and Nafia. And then last but not least, uh, we uh, several years ago recognized that uh, some data that was provided to us by the school district, that we have a very diverse community with many different languages spoken, but one of the predominant ones is Spanish. 46% of the community at that time was Hispanic and moving quickly towards uh, 50%. As an organization, not only do we want to be relevant to our community that we serve and to be re representative, but additionally, we want to make sure that we are um, not turning away from and not, uh, not being relevant to one in two members of our community. So we've worked hard over the last several years to develop bilingual staff programs, develop uh, forms in both English and Spanish, uh, to have programs that are specifically reaching out to uh, members of the, the community that are oftentimes in various different states uh, from first generation immigration to the United States to many years uh, in the United States, but closely identifying with their heritage. And so uh, last year, our winner was Ramon from Cypress Park High School. We also want to make sure that we're taking care of our teachers. It's a very tough job to do what our educators do. And uh, so part of our commitment to write good into the life stories around us is our classroom makeover program. Uh, last year, you can see that we were on site at the Berry Center as part of the Teacher RRR Conference. And our theme was uh, to reflect that we think teachers are heroes without capes. And so we decided to take the hero theme to the 100th uh, degree. And so uh, Batman and Robin got to get up on stage each morning and present uh, either a classroom makeover check or one of our runner-up checks to one of uh, six uh, recipients. We had three $500 winner, winners, one from Sheridan, one from Rowe Middle School, uh, happened to be named after one of our board members who's sitting here, and Cy Woods High School. And then we had three runners-up who also won $150 and they were from Emory Elementary, also uh, represented here today, Aragon Middle School and Cy Park High School. An interesting uh, note is that when we did our uh, 60th anniversary and we captured all the names that ultimately fed into a, a version of our Legacy Hall at our Cy Fair FCU uh, branded location, uh, we identified 16 names that were school namesakes and arguably legends in CFISD who were also instrumental and um, involved in the board of directors, involved in the credit committee, involved in the supervisor committee who had been a large part of the history of Cypher FCU. And that number has only grown over the last few years since our 60th anniversary with additional namesakes. So there's a lot of connectivity if you walk around our uh, administrative facility, you'll see our conference rooms are named after many of those uh, individuals who have both legacy uh, fingerprints in the school district and also at the credit union. We want to retain that connectivity. We want to keep that history in front of us. So what's ahead for 2024? Our branch manager, Danny, of our Skinner branch location has been long suffering and he has heard me say this in many platforms, uh, his branch is now the most uh, out of date, which is hard to imagine. It was our newest, most beautiful branch built in 2008. And since then we have uh, updated and moved locations and contracted locations and uh, put up a brand new model for serving our members. And Skinner was, slated a couple of years ago to uh, get the full remodel treatment. 
and then the opportunity to partner and merge with Prairie View Federal Credit Union came along and it was like having a baby brother all of a sudden they come in and they steal your thunder start playing with your toys and so uh, Skinner has had to wait Skinner is going to be remodeled this year uh, we have uh, already completed the uh, architectural designs and made all of those decisions uh, it is uh, out for bid we have initial dollars that have been uh, allocated for that project and so uh, we're as soon as we have it finalized and pick the final contractor we'll begin to communicate to all of our members about that project and then Damien won't give me that look uh, that he always gives me about being neglected over there at Skinner our licensing agreement with Prairie View AMU is pending. We think that is going to be a significant development uh, in 2024. Part of the agreement that we are seeking is uh, would provide us additional exclusive access on campus to do membership drives, business development events, to talk with students and faculty about the program. We think that will be an important aspect. Uh, and then we are projecting that loan delinquency and loan losses are likely to remain elevated. Uh, what you saw in those historical trends have con has continued into the early part of 2024, and uh, we see that that is going to remain. Uh, on the very next slide, you'll see that uh, some part of that may be the uh, adjustments that the district is having to make uh, due to the budget gap. But we were sitting on a very large state uh, surplus. There was every reason to believe that some of those dollars would uh, flow to our schools. We are ranked 50th out of 50 states uh, for public education funding in the country. And so uh, it's, it's upsetting to see that our uh, district is in this position. Um, there is already meetings occurring to make adjustments and some of those are about uh, what positions would have to be curtailed, what what other services would have to be curtailed in order to meet it. Um, so we are anticipating some impact from that and that could affect delinquency and losses. Significant focus on Lone Star College and, and Prairie View. Both of them we see those as primary sources of new members with those uh, agreements in place once they are in, in place at both places. Uh, we see that is a significant driver of uh, additional account holders, uh, borrowers, uh, people who uh, we can help along their financial journey and we can be their key partner. And then last but not least, uh, we are an organization that believes in uh, relevancy and in trying to uh, continue to reinvent for contemporary needs to stay ahead of uh, regulatory requirements, new technology, and part of that is staying ahead of our competitors who uh, sometimes are driving that and sometimes are being um, consumed by those same challenges. And rather than letting that growth go to our competitors, uh, we have made sure that we are positioning ourselves to make uh, some of those organizations a part of the Cypher SCU family. We have a very different mentality about acquisitions. Um, some of the people who work in uh, the industry that I have chosen for all these years can be somewhat predatory about coming alongside an organization when they are in a moment of crisis and trying to pull them in uh, to the organization. And we've really tried to not do that. Uh, we really feel like the cooperative principles of credit unions are about people helping people, about collaboration, uh, pooling your resources and giving each other a leg up. And so we've tried to embody that we think that what we've done with Prairie View is a very unique model, and we think that uh, more stories should not have to disappear. Uh, a lot of times, by consolidating the back office, by having the centralized administrative, removing some of the uh, technology requirements that are on small credit unions, folding those into uh, infrastructure that we already have and that's paid and that is um, uh, adequate for the additional growth, we can potentially bring in some others. So we're having some of those conversations today, and uh, if we reach any additional agreements, we would share that with our members through all of our communication channels. In closing, I'd like to say thank you to our loyal members who come out and hear the, our reports and take an interest in the credit union, who use us for your accounts and loans, uh, who 
fill out surveys and tell us what we're doing right and what we can do better at so that we can continue to meet your needs and the needs of your family. I want to thank our amazing solution-focused and hardworking Cypher SU team members across the organization, whether they work answering phones, helping members in the branch, or whether they work in accounting, compliance, marketing, technology. Uh, we have so many people who are like-minded in their earnestness to serve our members, to, to serve each other, and to embody our values. And then last but absolutely not least, thank you to our dedicated board and supervisor committee members who give their time voluntarily, without pay, uh, year after year, make us a better organization and provide the governance, the oversight, and the strategic direction uh, that hopefully is continuing to create value for you. With that, I'm going to pass it over to the supervisor committee report, which unfortunately means you get to hear my voice just a little bit longer because uh, Gary Kinninger could not be here today, and so I'm going to uh, provide you his report. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the committee consists of five members uh, over the course of 2023. Uh, the role of the Credit Union Supervisor Committee is to work with the Board of Directors and the Executive Leadership Team to ensure that the Credit Union adheres to regulations, policies and generally accepted accounting policies and principles which have been established to safeguard the credit union's assets. The Supervisor Committee oversees internal and external audit activities, and for 2023, the credit union's independent external audit was conducted by the firm Doreen Mayhew, a certified public accounting and consulting firm. This audit recently concluded with no adjusting entries or recommendations, Further, the auditors determined that, in their opinion, the credit union's financial statements for 2023 are fairly presented in all material respects, and the financial position of Cypher Federal Credit Union has been affirmed. In addition to the external CPA audit, the National Credit Union Administration conducts periodic regulatory examinations. The most recent NCUA exam was completed in September 2023 for the period ending June 30th, 2023. And based on the findings of the credit union's external audits, internal audits, and examinations by federal regulators, I'm happy to report that strong internal processes are in evidence, and the posted 2023 financials for Cypher SEU have been confirmed by independent experts. The credit union is diligent in its efforts to comply with all applicable regulations and reports, and these have been filed with the committee during this past year, which reflects sound processes and practices. That concludes the Supervisor Committee Report, and I would now like to introduce Ms. Gail Parker, who will uh, give the nominating committee report. We've certainly heard a lot of positive and accolades tonight, positive things and accolades, and it's my pleasure to be able to talk to you just briefly um, about our awesome and wonderfully dedicated Board of Directors. Following last year's annual meeting, the board met to conduct its regular April board meeting. Early in the meeting agenda, the board held elections for board table officers, including board chair, vice chair, treasurer, and secretary. Additionally, each director was appointed to a board con committee consisting of either the board asset liability committee or the board governance and nominating committee. The Board ALM Committee helps to oversee the credit union's balance sheet management and interest rate risk management. The Governance and Nominating Committee oversees various aspects of board governance, including the annual board nominating process and formulating recommendations to the board for appointments to open positions. This past November, the nominating committee began evaluating candidates for expiring terms on the credit union board of directors and any open positions in October. And I had the pleasure of chairing this year's committee. SciFair FCU's board of directors consists of nine volunteer directors elected from the credit union's membership. Board members are elected for three-year terms, and their terms are staggered to ensure continuity of oversight and governance. When a board member leaves before completing their term, a replacement candidate may be appointed by the board chair to serve until the next annual meeting where they must stand for election by the members. 
If elected, the candidate will complete the years remaining on the original three-year term. At today's annual meeting, four board positions are required to stand for election. These include two three-year positions along with two additional positions where the current incumbent was appointed to fill an opening after the previous annual meeting. According to the credit union's bylaws, appointed board members may serve until the next annual meeting of members where they must stand for election by the membership. The nominating committee confirmed that the four present incumbents in these positions were, were interested in continuing to serve on the board of directors and willing to be placed on the ballot. Additionally, the credit union posted information about the 2024 elections and solicited nominations from the credit union's membership through its website. The results from that process yielded no additional candidate applications or prospective nominees. In consideration of the strong involvement, experience, and expressions of interest by the four incumbents up for election, the nominating committee nominated the following individuals for these positions. Erwan Wilson for a three-year term, Chuck Brandman for a three-year term, Reagan Pugh for a three-year term, and Dr. Cheryl Henry for a two-year term. All of these nominees have demonstrated a commitment to a high-level governance model, representation of the members, and have been engaged in appropriate due diligence throughout the year. They have been exemplary members of the board and have contributed positively to the credit union's governance. Additionally, they meet all position requirements outlined in the credit union's corporate governance policy. When you came in tonight, you were given a copy of the candidate bios in your packet where you can read about the qualifications of each of these nominees. As directed by our bylaws, tonight, notice of tonight's annual meeting and associated elections was mailed to members during the first week of January along with the information describing how additional nominations could be made by petition with signatures of 1% of the credit union's eligible members. The February 10th deadline passed without additional nominations. In accordance with our bylaws, when only one member is nominated for an open position, the nominees from the nominating committee shall be deemed elected by general consent to the position and for the term that was designated when originally making their nomination. With a quorum of members present at this duly held annual meeting, the motion passes affirming the election of these four nominees to the Credit Union Board. Please join me in congratulating Erwan Wilson, Chuck Brandman, Reagan Pugh, and Dr. Cheryl Henry. <clears throat> and especially for their continued service on behalf of the Credit Union's membership. It's been a pleasure to serve as the nominating committee chair for this year's elections, and that concludes the nominating committee report. And I'm going to give the floor back to Mr. Dickey. I want to thank Ms. Parker for nominating, uh, chairing the nominating committee. Uh, she has done it before and done it uh, splendidly, so I thank you. That's uh, not an easy task. And congratulations again to our reelected board members. Um, we have one board member who has announced that they are going to be retiring and leaving the board uh, soon. And so we want to thank her for her service. And uh, the board will begin the process anew. And so we will engage with you shortly uh, to uh, look at that and uh, figure out that path forward. With that, uh, we're going to move into the business portion of our agenda. And so under old business, uh, we need to determine if we have any old business. Sir. Okay, well, there's a motion to acknowledge that there is no old business. Uh, under new business, is there any new business? At this time, I'd like to ask my team who are administering the virtual meeting if any questions have been posted through the online 
chat or hands raised. Seeing none, I'm going to invite Jacob back up to close out our meeting. SciFair FCU is an organization committed to helping our members to overcome financial challenges, to reach for and attain their financial goals, and to be a knowledgeable collaborator through every step. Our board, executive team, and staff seek to embody our organizational vision every day, to write good into the life stories of those around us. Put simply, you are the reason we exist and why we do what we do. That concludes this year's annual meeting. Whether you attended in person or online, I wanna thank you for participating in our look back at our results of CFFCU's 67th year of business. A copy of our full 2023 annual report is available on our website at sciferfcu.org slash meetings. It has a lot of great information about what the credit union accomplished in the past year and a glimpse of things we're working on in 2024. As a member-owned financial cooperative, your involvement in our annual meeting in the accounts, goals, and business that you entrust to us, they are greatly appreciated. We know that you have many financial services choices, and we strive to earn your business every day. Please stay safe and well, and let us know if there's anything we can do to help you and your family. We are adjourned by acclamation, and have a good night. <laughs>